Okay, guys. So yesterday, guys, yesterday we talked about geometric sequences, and the form that we used yesterday was the explicit form. Today, we're going to talk about recursive form of geometric sequences. The recursive form of a geometric sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times r. So the recursive form is a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times r, and you also have to list what a sub 1 is. What's a sub 1? First term. Good. a sub 1 is the first term in the sequence, and r is the, what is r? Mm -hmm. What's that called? What's the R called? Common ratio. So let's look at the first example. It says the first term is 8 and the common ratio is 1 half. Write the recursive formula. So I'm just going to rewrite the recursive formula first. So n equals a sub n minus 1 times r. And I have to also list what a sub 1 is. When you're writing the recursive form, you only put numbers in two places. You put a number here, and you put a number at here. So I'm going to write a sub n equals a sub n minus 1. Then I have to write the common ratio, which is given as one half. And then I have to list what the first term is, which in this question is eight. If you write this, if you write this, you are wrong. You will not get credit for this. You cannot put a number here. A number does not go there. This right here is all you do. That's all you do. Y'all try the next one. All right, do y'all agree or disagree with his answer? What is three? What's that called? Ratio. What kind of ratio? Common. Common ratio. All right, let's look at the next example. It says that the fourth term is 1 over 24, and the common ratio is 1 half. It asks us to write the recursive formula. So I'm going to write a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times my r, which is 1 half. But I have to write my first term. Am I given the first term? Yes. Uh, no. I'm given the fourth term. So but, nope. No. I can find the first term by using the explicit formula that we learned yesterday. So I'm going to have a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. That's the formula that we learned about yesterday. So I'm going to plug in what I know. I know that the fourth term is 1 over 24. So I can plug in 1 over 24 here. Do I know what my first term is? No. No. So I leave it as a sub 1. Do I know what my r is? Yes. What's my r? 1 half. 
One half. And what is in? Yes, we do. So what is in? Four. Minus one. All right. Using the calculators that you have on your desk, I want everyone, come on, PJ, turn around. Turn around. In your calculators, I want y'all to type in one half to the third power. The fourth term is one over 24. Put it in a fraction. The guys. A sub n is 1 over 24 because that's the fourth term. I have to plug in 4 for n. So if in your calculators, put 1 half to the third power. It gives you a decimal point. Mm hmm. If you turn that decimal point into a fraction, you should get 1 over 8. Alright. From here, I still have to get a sub 1 by itself. In order to do that, I have to divide each side by one eighth. So I have one over twenty four divided by one eighth. When I'm dividing a fraction, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So when I go to here, I'm going to have one over twenty four times eight over one gives me eight over twenty four. Reduce the fraction. When you reduce the fraction, you should get a sub 1 is equal to 1 third. So 8 over 24 is equal to 1 third. Y'all try the next one. Watch Anthony. I want to watch you. Oh, oh, oh. That's it. Hmm? Good job. That's wrong. Pay attention. Just, just right. Just let him try it. Because your paper is touching the board. The dude told me it was right. Dude, shut up. You failed it. Then stop. Sit down. I don't know. We'll see. Do y'all agree or disagree with his answer? The answer is correct. The answer is correct. But you forgot one thing. Recursive, Anthony, recursive form, you have to write this. Alright, I heard someone say that they were confused, so let's work through the problem. I'm going to extend the page. Alright, guys, pay attention. Brittany, move over here behind Patricia, please. <coughs> Alright, guys. Back up two seats. Yes. Back up two seats. Back up two seats. 
So we're given the problem and it says that the fourth term is 625. The common ratio is 5 and it asks us to write recursive formula. So the recursive formula is a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times r. We're given r. r is 5. So we write 5. But we have to state what the first term is, but we're not given the first term. So that's when we have to do this to find the first term. What it was, was 625 is equal to a sub 1 times 5 to the 4 minus 1 power. Because our formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. Now, all we have to do is solve for a sub 1. So, in your calculator, you should have put 5 to the 4 minus 1 power. Alright, 5 to the 3rd power is 625 equals a sub 1 times 125. We're having to solve for a sub 1. So I have to divide by 125. So 5 equals a sub 1. And then you have to write 5 right here. You have to write it right here. You have to write it like this because it asks for a recursive formula. So this is it. It says that if on the first day three people told two other people a secret, and then if every person told two other people the secret, write the explicit formula to model this situation. How many people would know the secret on the eighth day? So on this one, instead of writing recursive, it asks us to write the explicit formula. So that's the a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. Do I know what a sub n is? No. no. So I keep a sub n. Do I know what the first term is? What is it? 3. What is r? We told 3 people and they each told 2 person, two people. So this is my formula. This is a two-part question. Now it asks for me to find how many people would know the secret after the eighth day. From here, I'm going to have a sub 8 is equal to a sub 1, or I mean not a sub 1, is equal to 3 times 2 to the 8 minus 1. Plug it into your calculators. Good job. Plug into your calculator. Do three parentheses, two parentheses, carrot, or the house, rooftop. Yep. Eight minus 
one in earth? That's your answer. What'd you get, Jay? What'd you get? Is that why you're on back? Good job. Get in here. What'd you get? Let me see what you put in the calculator. Oh, uh, yeah. I messed up. I mean, yeah. Yep. All right. Let's look at the last example. I'm sorry, you went out of the room. You can see it in a minute. The table shows. Come on, guys. The table shows that a car's value for three years. Stop. You too, PJ. Turn around. The table shows the car's value for three years after it's purchased. The values form a geometric sequence. How much will the car be worth after eight years? I need the explicit formula again. So I'm going to have A sub N is equal to A sub 1 times R to the N minus 1 power. I don't know. I'm looking for the eighth term. So I'm going to have A sub 8. Do I know what my first term is? What is it? 18,000. What is R? Is it given? No. But can I find it? Do I know how to find it? Yeah. How? R is equal to A sub 2 divided by A sub 1. Turn it to a fraction. What is A sub 2? 15,300. 15, What's A sub 1? 18,000. When y'all divide those two numbers, what do you get? Is it just 8.5? Or 0.85? Make sure you have enough zeros in both of your numbers. Because it should be 0.85. Okay. 0.85. Is that a terminating decimal? Does it stop? If it stops, you do not have to turn it into a fraction. If this stops, you do not have to turn it into a fraction. So you can use the number point. Point eight five. So this is point eight five is my R. I'm going to put it right here. What is in? Eight. So I'm going to have eight minus one. Yep, that'll do it. So what is A sub 8 equal to? 5,770.38. Round correctly. 39. 